Okay, so let's call the meeting to order at 101. Uh, and um, we have regrets from Joanne, I guess, is the only person absent. Um, as part of calling to order, I just want to double check with people how late you can stay. Do people have like hard stops today? And I think it's my sanity, but otherwise, <laughs> nobody's rushing off to a tutoring thing. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. I just yeah. want to make sure we, because it's a bit of a long agenda and we may end up um, going a bit longer. You're okay for time to? As long as it doesn't go past five o'clock. Yeah, it won't go past five. <laughs> Hopefully it won't go past four, but we will see. <laughs> um, so um, just have a moment of reflection, please. So I'd like to read the Indigenous Acknowledgement Statement. We would like to begin our meeting by recognizing the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples of Canada as traditional stewards of the land. The municipality is located within the boundary of Treaty 18, Region of 1818, which is the traditional land of the Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat Wyandot peoples. Okay, um, in terms of the agenda, I'd like to move item F3, which is the uh, strategic plan pillar on community hubs, up to the first item under F, so it becomes F1. So I think will be our major discussion item of the day, so I'd like to have it earlier rather than later. And as we go through, there's some items here that may not need much discussion. So I may just ask, do we need to discuss this or can we just move on, on through? Uh, there's certain items that we do absolutely need to do today and they are the finance ones at the end. Uh, so with that change, I wonder if I can have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Um, Pat and Chris, any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Thank you, that's carried. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, we'll move on to reports to be received. And so we have four reports to be received, the action plan update for June, the CEO service update for June, the draft, 2022 audited financials and the first quarter um, variance report. So a mover and seconder to receive those, please. Marie and Sean, all in favor? Thank you, that's Gary. Minutes. Um, the first set of minutes is the March 16th ones. And if you flip through the version that you had at your spot today, there's a section that's highlighted. And um, I ask that we add a note. You'll see at the top of page five, where it says note and continues. So give you a moment to read that. I think uh, it'll be self-explanatory when you read it. I guess I'm just curious how the EMS functions. It's obviously not by name, then. So the guy they use another coordinate. If I remember. Yeah. 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 GPS, if I remember, is how they're, <clears throat> they're finding from calls. And I just didn't want the minutes going out looking like that was still an active thing that no, you don't pick up with it. That's why I was suggesting that addition. Um, so and then there's um, another piece that's in the works. We uh, made the request of council 
uh, well, through SMT, the senior management team, and uh, a letter will be going off to the actual council through correspondence tomorrow, uh, requesting the name change for the museum to be the Craigley Station, which is the original 1886 yeah. building. Uh, so that would be just one more layer of kind of removing that confusion. Okay. 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 So, um, Mm, but let's put a motion on the floor uh, that the board approve as amended. Is this the typo? Um, yeah, probably options. Be, probably renaming uh, rather than our name. Okay. Okay. Well, we got in that case. It is what is the blur? We just in the yellow. The last <laughs> option for naming became, became options. Other options. No, like we could that up. It's not a sentence. No, no. There, I did not send an order. Somebody sent an email. Should be period. You're looking at me? No, I'm looking at the screen behind you. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. What I do? Just a little very nice. <laughs> Yeah, you may not disappear so you can see when you make changes on the screen. Or like you can see her computer, I guess. Yeah, I can't move again. Don't worry. Yeah. Just, don't don't be surprised. Oh, okay, okay. I'm staring at you. I may from time to time say, what are you doing like this? <laughs> Thanks for pointing it out. <laughs> I talked to my students that I tutor about autocorrect. We all, oh, you know, it all mm -hmm. blends together and we know what it's intending to say, and our brain fixes, fixes it for us. So we, it's hard yeah. to see your mistake. Well, yeah. that's smart. Does that work better? Additionally, the board has begun the request for renaming of the museum to its original 1886 name of the Craigwood Station. Yeah, like that. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so as amended. So I'm looking for mover and seconder to approve those minutes as amended. Yes, it's Sean and Pat. Any other discussion? All in favor? Thank you, that's great. Um, there were also minutes, okay, that's fine. Um, regarding the training day or their notes actually not minutes um, from the training day back on in April April 20th uh, so we're looking for a move in secondary to get that in the floor Chris thank you Julia thank you any discussion or changes I wasn't there I was <laughs> and then Julia will be signing these as well Okay, seeing no discussion, um, all in favor? Thank you, that's carried. So communications with the board, no deputations, no public input and no correspondence. So no need for a motion. Okay, so that takes us to discussion about yesterday and just uh, to be sure that it's clear, um, there is a closed session also at the end. If anything becomes such that it should be enclosed, then uh, that can be discussed uh, later. Um, but in the meantime, uh, they're uh, like to open the floor to discussion of yesterday. And I have been thinking about it. So I just want to um, suggest that we kind of have five topics and you can tell me if I'm wrong you think it's a different structure but we have a significant request from council for information this fall and I wrote down various aspects of that kind of on the fly things moved awfully quickly yesterday um, I imagine well I was struggling to disembook the conversation and think about how to respond to stuff and uh, missed I think a lot of um important bits <laughs> that, uh, for example, one person suggested there was a building of about a million dollars we were talking about, 
I was busy trying to think about what questions she had asked me so I could respond to them and uh, didn't take the opportunity to say that's way off base. Um, right, that was assuming that it would be a million dollars to operate. That that's building, right, yeah. Which it would not be. Yes, so I was regretting not having uh, picked up on some of those things. There's one or two other things like that that uh, blew by too fast. I, I wouldn't have too many regrets because that's what a lot of them are, have been doing is just steamrolling people like with all this bombardment of questions. Like even if you had all the answers, they still would come up with more things. That's been my experience so far. I will be sending the link around because it's live streamed now mm -hmm. is up. Um, I will go through myself also and watch again to pull any pieces that there either wasn't the opportunity to respond we wouldn't have had the information to respond mm -hmm. or it wasn't relevant to respond because yeah. there were a lot of sort of offside pieces that, but still when we're looking at a report, we want to make sure nothing is left behind. So I will go through that and come up with sort of a working list as well. Um, would it be appropriate once you've done that, there may be some things that we might just want to send correspondence to the council immediately to um, want to clarify some some things is uh, maybe better to clarify them earlier rather than waiting for a report that isn't going to reach them until the fall. Correct. But, and what if we do so? What would the timing be when they would actually read it? Mm -hmm. Well, we only get reports a week before it comes. So, like, if you're There's on a the possibility, it would make it to the july meeting which is mid-july if it's in yeah if it's, and that's the last if it's in good time and that's tight and that's as soon as they would otherwise it's august it. 14th yeah. i believe yeah. is the next meeting yeah but that's still better than october yeah okay. yeah although i suspect if a lot of that was just red herrings and, and stuff too the yeah and they won't even remember what they said. <laughs> and so I don't know that we need to be that nitpicky at this stage of responding to each one of their questions. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. But I'm also aware that it was live streaming to the public. And yeah, so yeah. if it's out there with sort of misinformation or misrepresentation, especially something that we can correct, mm -hmm. then I think it's better to do so. So that is also at least available to the public. Even so would that mean you're reading that letter out to, to council at the meeting? No, it doesn't. It would be correspondence, but what we can also do is have the letter drafted and brought to the board meeting here in July, whenever we meet. Um, I know we're talking about just potentially moving that meeting due to holiday conflicts. Um, if we put that into our package, it then becomes part of our release to the public. It becomes part of our key messages and it then forwards to council. So even if council doesn't get that until mid August, we may have that off by early July. Well, that and if you, as you know, if you send, if you do send it as correspondence, rather than it get lumped in, I can pull it. And that means it gets read out loud. Correct. Huh. Yeah, but what happens? Is when there's when, as I'm sure you've seen, you know, I've seen a lot of the correspondences from people that really don't have solutions for anything or just mm -hmm. negative fancies that are in the community. So, quite generally, we, we really don't want to, you know, we've already read it or not read it or whatever. So, but in this case, mm -hmm. I would I would request to have that pulled so that it's read out loud and discussed and then voted on to, to accept. So yeah. that is an option. That makes it public then. Makes mm -hmm. it very public. Yeah. Uh, but so does uh, Dr. Well, Sanders, the, too. The, 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 and the correspondence would still be appended too. Yeah. 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 It's still published and accessible, but it gets said out loud if I pull it. If I say I want, you know, ask the clerk to pull that. So that's, okay. that is an option. So, so the purpose then of, of the letter would be to clarify erroneous <clears throat> comments and answer questions where where possible. Where possible things that don't need to wait until a report yeah. or major research to be done. Yeah. If there were presumptions that could be corrected. And so do we do both of these things we bring was a draft here, um, which means it doesn't get to council until August. Is that correct? 
Uh, no, it would be July. It would still be July. Okay, so we do a draft here. Depending on when our meeting is. Right. Okay, so we may want to time our meeting so that we can make sure it all happens in July. Okay. Possible. Yes. Okay. Good. Um, so, where was I? Okay. And if we miss their meeting, it will go publicly on their package in August, but we still have the ability because we'd be circulating it, it would be out to the public, it would be in our our typical yeah. reports that we do to the public in our key messages and our newsletter. So it would preempt physically getting there, uh, but uh, and then it would be heard again at the August meeting. Right. So we have options depending on which way we go with the rest of our discussions today. Okay, great. Now, what was that? Your five topics. My five topics. So what, what information council has requested for the fall, um, I have the, um, the return on investment. We have the usage data regarding the East End and LES, as well as projections. We have, I guess, the operating costs, three and new build which is a really tricky one because it probably has a lot to do with size as well. Anyway, so that was definitely a request. And overall, a business case. And uh, there's a needs assessment as well. And I see that actually as a separate topic, but it's also something they have requested. So that is my second area, is the community consultation on the new library bill which was very specific to Craigley. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was good to get that specifically identified and the needs assessment report to council in the fall. So that's kind of a second topic. Um, third was the question of the Craigley working group connections. And uh, there we spoke with briefly with Steve Granger, who was the one you corresponded mm -hmm. with and John, whose name escapes me, yeah, we're, yeah, real, 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 yeah, John. Super John nice. I know, I, I can only get as far as ever as well. Yeah. I it's very difficult to hear in council when there's chatter going on in the atrium. Yes, <laughs> yeah, and there's also, also a connection to um, the ratepayers, and I don't know whether they're both on the ratepayers as well, or um, oh, I got a bit confused at that point because Hurry. there's two possible working groups. Uh, one maybe established by council on one that was already working, whether that's two groups or one group that might merge or not, okay. in terms of reference for the one appointed by council. So there's a lot of- It hasn't been made yet. That clear, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And- uh, I'd anyway. like to clarify that, that John is a, rate, a member of Great Pairs Association, yeah. but he's also, you know, a, a community member of Reagan's. So he's kind of, he is kind of both. I can't speak to Stephen. I don't know if Stephen's a, a rate right payer, but apparently, and I don't know if I'm trying to get out or I'm taking this off topic, apparently the Rate Payers Association sent a letter around about their view on this project. They didn't send it to me though. <laughs> Isn't that natural, right? <laughs> so we did have, I had a question here, offered any information I could sent a, a simple email about what the process was that we're just trying to get ahead of missing mm -hmm. opportunities yeah. um, and that I was happy to speak at any time. Mm -hmm. And that's all I heard. Yeah. And there was a session, I think, in New York. Well, we talk, discussed I'm not sure, that we might invite them, um, the working, working group, uh, to meet with us maybe in July or August to get a good sense of the directions they're going in and be able to provide some input mm -hmm. to them. Uh, my fourth topic is the uh, board council pairing that we mm -hmm. talked about and uh, developing our messages for that. And my fifth is the role in the facility study which was extremely confusing. I found the meeting because I they they there was no indication of which neighboring municipality we were talking about. And since we were all talking about the east, I made the assumption we were talking about the east, especially since they were talking about multi-use. 
And then um, it sounds like it's a, a different creature than that. So we, part of the motion is that we should be consulted in the development of the multi-use, which I don't think is bad. Um, if it's as holistic in terms of geography as councils seem to, as I understood from what council said, but if it's really about a West End, then that's a different creature. So I think that's on that topic. piece, if I can, um, not a piece that I was ready to get into in the meeting, because frankly, that's not us. This multiplex, no. big sixty-five million dollar project. Yeah. Certainly, we're at the table. Um, but if it's regional, the Public Libraries Act has issues with this. Um, as a public library, mm -hmm. we are name of the public library of said municipality. To have a regional project would actually mean that we would be paying somebody else or they would be paying us to have library services. So for example, if it happened on the West End and it's in participation with Meaford, if the property where the joint projects happens is not in the town of Blue Mountains, we don't have a library anymore. We pay Meaford for library services. And that's the Public Library Act legislation. So I didn't want to get into that because that was a very 65 million being thrown around in 10 to 12 years. It felt very much like it was, you know, we'll deal with this at a, a later decade. Um, but certainly if that is the intention in the future, we always need to remember that we are the public library board. You are the public library board. You are governed by the Public Libraries Act. And the establishment and running of a public library is at the minister's direction by the legislation. And they are very clear how you can have specific things. Yeah. And regional libraries are not one of those. Mm -hmm. County libraries, union libraries, municipal libraries, um, there were some groups that happened in the 80s in earlier periods before the Public Libraries Act that they grandfathered in. Um, more so were regional at that point, and those have all failed and been taken on as city librarians or municipal libraries now. So we don't have to get deep into the weeds on that, but that is... I think it was a big thing. This project is a very big... big that, was, that was just a hand grenade to throw in there. And I, I believe it was. It pushes the decision-making off by a decade, but also it's not being aware of the Public Libraries Act. There's very clear rules on how we have to yeah. engage on that. Which is why I... Oh, sir. Sorry, I was just going to ask Ben to clarify, should that be part of the letter that goes as soon as possible? We can. Yeah, I we would say that's what I was going to say. That would be probably a good thing to clarify that uh, due to the... And once you mention act, go back down. Because yeah. They can't, you can't fight, you can't fight an act, right? So the protection for us. That's why it's there. Yeah. So the the facility study, is that, is that from what the CAO was saying yesterday, um, he kind of, he kind of threw in the kitchen sink. Yeah, so, right? so does that, so it had really the, Madam Chair or Madam Mayor should have just, you know, shut that. That was just a completely left segue. Like a facility study really has zero to do with the library, right? And what I'm sick of is the is the thought and feeling of, oh, well, we're gonna build this and then we'll give you this little tiny corner here. That's for you. You you, you know, you shoehorn yourself in there. I'm sick of that discussion, right? Mm -hmm. The facilities thing, that has to do with baseball diamonds, arenas, pools, like or tennis courts, pickleball courts, lawn bowling, you know, you name it, like recreational facility. That's, that's in the word, right? It's recreation, it's that's what the facility study is. It has nothing to do with the library, nothing. It's just, it was a, I think it was a weak point that they just threw out there again to try and derail this. I really struggled with that because the, um, the, what was mentioned was that uh, the library had been involved in a major activity study and we've been quote key stakeholder and we had never even been consulted on it and we didn't even make it into the survey 
um, because we never knew it was happening and it was clearly focused on recreational facilities. Yeah. There, there were interviews that I did one-on-one, -on -one, but we were not part of these every two week meetings. Mm -hmm. So, and it was very clear, even with the consultants, when we would talk about Craig Leaf, for example, which we heard yesterday, we didn't mention, we did mention, it just doesn't make it pass because everything was, okay, well, what does that have to do with the recreation stuff? So it was more a case of what recreation are you doing at the library that maybe is a leisure aspect? So it wasn't about library services proper. It wasn't about library locations. It was very much about what we were engaged on with the three separate meetings that happened with the consultant. Um, the first two they did, and then the third was coming back for some clarifying points. It was really about, we do seniors exercise, we do yoga, um, as opposed to where library services fit and also providing aspects of leisure to our community and where those leisure activities need to occur in the municipality. Those were not part of the conversation. And not because we didn't bring them up, there were very clear directions that the consultant had created based on, I'm assuming, the scope of work. So we were very clearly answering questions on what they were looking at, and they were not looking at facilities for the library. And there's a, a continuum of consultation, which I'm going to forget now, but it basically goes from, uh, uh, as a partner, down to send something in the mail. And so it sounds like we were a stakeholder, I can mean many things. We were asked a few targeted questions. We weren't a big participant in the design of the study or the, we, yeah. We Analysis just, and then um, it's the IA. And then the um, consideration of what goes in the report. Of what, sorry? Consideration of what goes in the report. That's the consultant's role. Yeah. And that's huge. And, and they were taking their marching orders from somebody in the staff. So I think the fact that we were included as a key stakeholder, it, it's a bit misleading because there's no definition of stakeholder. Mm -hmm. No, smoke and mirrors. Yeah. 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 We all are stakeholders. We're all yeah. residents and taxpayers. Yeah. yeah. So then what are we talking about? Yeah. Right. Funny, I didn't get an invite. I pay taxes like everybody else, <laughs> right? That's what the way I would interpret it. Um, but anyway. Well, I completed the survey, but again, the way the questions are phrased really directs the responses. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And who designs the questionnaires is they have an agenda. Sure, they're getting paid 50, 75, 130, $300,000 to do this study. Yeah. Um, Supreme, do you have access to the actual motion that council passed? I'm wondering if we could get a print copy in front of us because it's uh, it's fairly complex and maybe that's also a way to look at this because I'm thinking about I just um, in my rapid notes trying to capture stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've written down uh, is the leisure facility study and the multi-use study the same thing? And it seems to me we've been put in there, you know, to be consulted. There'd be a full consultation with the board with the development of the study. Now, but if that's a study that's not even about us, it's quite like what what do we do about that? <laughs> so okay, so that is so this is the motion that was passed yesterday. So it's the third the one to third one. Yeah, because so I was right? happy about that thinking that that multi-use feasibility study was regarding the land in Craigland. I had no idea. That's no, not that is what we're talking about. That's a larger yeah, but I didn't idea know of what is needed. And that's the one that they said would be between six and 12 months to complete. Yeah. And I'm not sure where they are in the actual RFP portion of that. I don't believe we're at, we're not, we haven't started the project yet. Because it was approved six, it was approved six months ago. So, I mean, we're six months later, it's going to be, it'll be six months to a year from now. Yeah. So it's sort of like, that's, so again, it's the term multi-use is being utilized for two different structures. Two completely different things, yeah. And two different projects. So it, it muddies the water. Mm -hmm. 
yeah blurs the lines so now do we have ter are there terms of reference for that study that we can put our hands on i'm uh, sure that there is a scope that was released and that's something that i can request from from the town clerk and so the language that I wrote down, facility study, is actually, they called it a multi-use. And, and it's quite right. The whole, in retrospect, one of the councillors tried to bring this back to, shouldn't this be talking about the home farm? Mm -hmm. And uh, that was I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yes, and I didn't clue in at how important that question was. Yeah. And then she kind of got silence and then it moved on. Not silence. He stood up and said, no. Okay. That would be, that was uh, Sean, he stood up and said, no, that would make it more difficult or something. Hmm. More limiting. Limiting, yeah. Because he wanted to reuse other facilities, possibly. She was going in somewhere else. So I guess we don't know whether that multi-use, until we see the scope of that. I can request the scope of that document um, and bring that back just so that you... Maybe that's what could go in the letter that we're thinking about because multi-use is one term that's being um, associated with different projects. And so we can say we were not thinking of this multi-recreational facility, that that was not part of the goal, but it's to support the Craig Street um, mm -hmm. residents. And we're in the previous promise of the library there we were just trying to utilize the space to make it more functional and cost effective mm -hmm. to utilize other aspects of services. I mean, you're talking about even town services of all different kinds, which won't be in the recreational one either. So, exactly. Yeah. That's a good point. We could give them in wanting to play nicely in the sandbox. <laughs> So I think that's a good thing, interesting other people about putting it into the letter that um, what we understood we were talking about with the term multi-use was a different thing than what Tom was trying to and um, and Ryan from um, whatever his uh, name, Ryan Gibbons, the director, the director of community of service, yeah. But I think it's important to say if there is if we are to be involved at what to specifically ask at what level, because I found that spectrum of public participation that's inform, consult, involve, collaborate, empower. So we don't just want to be informed or consulted. We would want to be involved mm -hmm. if we are a major potential. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. I will ask for the and scope forward. and where we are with the timeline and what specifically the scope should identify as I will ask what what is this study for I mean obviously if we're talking about it being part of this nine acre lot that's a very important piece yeah but it appears to me that it is municipality wide and if it is talking about this multiplex recreation facility that's a very different piece than what we're talking about. And of course, if the multiplex is open to where it's going to be in the municipality, we're saying that that's not appropriate because we're looking at Craigleaf East End services. So it only relates to us on that end, unless, of course, the comment of decommissioning buildings such as Ellie Shore is something that is actually being entertained in this then obviously the library board and the community needs to be aware of that. Yeah, I think things got a little carried away. And now looking at it from a second glance, is that maybe the reason that that Mr. Everett did not want the site specific on that multi-use feasibility study is because that would be directing, that would be a direction that the, the said study on that land, which of course, when the mention of, well, it's only nine acres, it will nothing, you know, that won't fit there. Right. So that's what I'm maybe, you know, I'm just looking at it from the backside that maybe that's the reason why Sean said, I don't put an address to that because that would, that would narrow the scope of that maybe that study. That's just where I'm seeing it now. Yeah. Just because maybe, you know, he obviously would not want that kind of direction. 
Yes. Not, not if what he's talking about is a much bigger facility. It would be much. This is, and that's where uh, those line, everything got drawn in about you know working with other municipalities and, and things like that. I think I think things just got pretty. There just got to be too much going on at one point. I would assume with the multi-use feasibility study, they're not looking at any land. No. Because we know that the you know campus of care mm -hmm. when the land happened is when the campus of care happened. Um, there's not a lot of land that the town owns, but that doesn't mean that you know some farmer's field is not going to come up for sale to the municipality. So I would assume that they would be looking at it being no designated location and what do we need and then trying to find the right lot to, suit to do that. Yeah. But again, for our purposes, we're looking at East End here, um, not West End, which we feel we have covered. And if there is no East End, then part of our feasibility study has to be identifying what would need to happen if there is only one library to be able to expand that library services to what needs to happen. Uh, but council would have to make the decision that Craig Leaf is not getting that level of service. That's not for us to decide. Or, sorry, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking again back to the one conversation, which was because you had mentioned, uh, Sabrina, about how, you know, people can walk there, they can do the easy travel, fairly easy. And then it was, you know, it was dismissed that, well, there are no, there's no sidewalks, there's no trails, there's no, you know, people can't walk there. So then that would, almost to me, that almost feels like that could bolster the original idea, which was to do an expansion at the station where the trail walks right by it, yeah. right? So what do you want, right? Do, you know, because that's, that's a center, that's a key location. And we know that um, the Village Association, BMRA, mm -hmm. they're looking at that, trails that end nowhere. Yeah. Again, that's not for us to have to worry about. No. If we know that it is in a location right on 19 where these pieces are being connected or being looked at by others, mm -hmm. we can bank on There's the other a, parties involved yeah. to bring that connectivity of communities together yeah, and not yeah. look at individual developments yeah. as standing well. Yeah, and and I'll, I'll be quiet here saying I just, what bothered me was this, you know, the met before mentioned by a few of them, what, oh, the chicken and egg thing. And it's like, no, 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 you know, and the way I see it is it's the field of dreams, right? If you build it, they'll come, right? Yeah, we talked about that too. We got to stop looking at this whole chicken and the egg thing because, you know, that chicken's about to get, you know, run over on the highway. It's not happening because there's all those, there's going to be almost, I don't know how many hundreds or almost thousands homes being built there means people are going to be living there mm -hmm. and then we'll miss that's what i said uh, you know we're going to miss we'll miss i don't want i i'm afraid we'll miss the mark right and then this all moves ahead and then oh well wouldn't that have been a great place for a library to expand to until mm -hmm. they know yeah. <laughs> you got a whole development of houses on it yeah and anyway, i'll be quiet just if we mm -hmm. suggest different possibilities like if we suggest because we talked about this that if it wasn't a factor like the ideal is to have a library in Craigley in the area do but we want to focus on just that don't we like rather than saying like we don't want to even bring up decommissioning Ellie Shore because we don't ever want that to happen right we don't want to put any suggestions yeah. in their minds so like another maybe something they might suggest is that we you know beef up Ellie Shore instead of doing that Correct. So we don't I really want to suggest two. that. The, the three yeah. options, in my opinion, would be the A, do nothing, which really is not the an option, but it's always always a, a possibility. Um, the preferred, based on community members who have spoken to us from Craigleaf, is to have equitable services in Craigleaf. And then the third option would be to forego having a branch system where there was no Craig Leaf library, but then we need to do the work here that has been identified uh, for multiple development charge studies now uh, to expand this building. Uh, there's major work that would need to happen here, but they also purchased a lot for the purpose in 2016. So it's not that it hasn't been talked about they purchased the adjacent lot for the expansion of Ellie Shore well before there was discussion of Craigley and even before there was discussion of the museum being part of us. 
So there are two pieces there. It's the question of whether or not the municipality is going to put East End services in, or if there is going to be a decision that the municipality's town center is Thornbury, which does not sit well with people who are on the East End. <laughs> but that's again, that's a council decision to say, this is where we want it to go. We want to look at our community in this way. And based on that, we build the appropriate building. Mm -hmm. We've said for equitable services, we need to have the East End. But if Craigleith is not going to be part of discussions for services, and we're looking only at multiplexes, which probably wouldn't be in Craigleith. And if they are, they would again, for regionality, would not be there. They would be at the far end where Collingwood touches Craigleith. Mm -hmm. Again, not an ideal location for community members. Um, th those are things that the council needs to make decisions on. I don't think they're going to get that out of the multi-use facility study. I think that's decisions that need to be made as a master plan decision. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that they're there. Yeah. I'm no, I'm I'm was, sorry. I was just thinking if we bring that option to their attention, they'll choose that being the easier route. But if they've already explored that, then yeah, they'll think of it on their own. I wonder if the business case, actually, that's what the business case comes down to. Here are your three options. Continue to do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and then the equitable services in Craigley, and then the expanding LES to serve the entire community. And uh, that that's what really that's what the question they're being posed with. Based on past growth that's already been collected in DCs mm -hmm. and future growth to a certain date. Mm -hmm. And then we provide the like we brainstorm the pros and cons of each of the three scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. And the needs assessment, which is focused on the East End, would be an important part of the a component of that study. Is this is what we've heard. So you know, if you don't choose equitable services in Fraley, you're actually going against what half your community is saying. That, I mean, just thinking about it from a, a cost perspective, that may not be viable in the future. So I, I don't know. I think it'll be difficult to just present the case based on numbers and community input. Like if they don't want to be convinced, then the numbers can be critiqued because they won't be that strong because we have the pandemic in there, right? And we talked a bit yesterday about, you know, build it, they will come and whether that's a good strategy or not. But I also question, and not that it's a case of trying to force hand, because that never works. This is a plain chicken. But if council is in a position to pass the next development charge study, which is stating a Craig Leaf building, and the previous development charge study, which was looking at expanding here and doing a Craig Leaf building. I feel very uncomfortable if we're going to be told we can't deal with this for 10 to 12 years, but then still have that in a, develop, a development charge study. And I don't want to say then don't give us any more money from that end, but I think that is a piece that needs to be tied into that we can't keep saying, keep gathering funds for the future because it may be needed as proposals are coming through with the valid rationale of why because you're taking money from developers to do a task. Okay. It is being collected, whether it's spent and the loan is being paid by the new development charges or not. So I do think that this is a piece to be considered part and parcel with that January, February, March process of development charge bylaw and consultation, mm -hmm. that if you are continuing to say, we think this is important. We're identifying X amount of dollars is going to be collected in the future for this task, but we keep saying there's no purpose for the task. I, I think there's a disconnect there. Um, I have not read every line of who else is in the DCs, um, but again, there's 
it's a contract with your community that we will collect funds from our developers for the gap stops that need to happen based on growth. And at some point, I think that needs to be looked at. Is it everybody else who is kind of being looked at is being planned in project like water treatment, roads, sewer expansion, and then we have a library who is continually being added, mm -hmm. collected for, and not moving forward. Well, and to your point is that currently with the provincial government, they're moving towards if you don't use it, then you end it's lose it. Yes. So, you know, I think that just that's the final nail right there. Like if you if they don't hurry up and make a decision and set set forth set forth a plan, then the provincial government's gonna say, Well, this is what we've been telling you. Right. Right. That's why they came up with Bill 23. Right, because municipalities are just sitting on development charges that they're not spending on. And the proposed expansions for Ellie Shore, mm -hmm. which were already made mm -hmm. at three million dollars, might have had a contingency that we could have banked on. That three million dollars is no longer three million dollars. No. Even with the contingencies, we know that the price has changed significantly. So it is a case of, you know, are we going to lose these funds in the future if we're not making some progress? And where is that contract with your developers and contract with your community and I think to, to pull DCs? To be fair, I think that's where you you have to, where there's the ability, that's where you pull Mr. Dinsmore in from finance because he is the development charge yes. guy. Like he lays it out there, he makes it, he knows it in and out crystal clear. So maybe just a thought, right? Pull him in to say, you know, have his two cents, which is this is how it is, right? So he can dispel a lot of mis mm -hmm. mis. Mis. Well. Actually, oh, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So who was the gentleman sitting on the side there? Yeah. Um, well, was the director? The CAO was the. Well, I know John was over here. Yeah, he time. was on our left side. Oh, I was with the reporter. The um. Oh yes, that's that's oh, that's, that's Chris Bell. He's the reporter for Common today. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the media desk. Okay. Yeah. Well, that'll be interesting when that gets into that Collingwood news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no library for correctly. So the business case, I think, would have a whole section on the DCs. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of what you guys just mm -hmm. covered. Does it bothered me? That's it really bothered me. Like, you know. Mm -hmm. No, that's why I made that call this morning. <laughs> Look into this. Okay, we'll do. Um. So, um, sort of feeling lately on how even how to handle this conversation. So we kind of started talking about council's request for this fall. Uh, so other things on my list had been the um, social ROI. So the ROI I've been told will be launching in September. So the template. September, the template will be launched in September. We have a meeting um, next week. I don't know what the date is, uh, but the next meeting is next week. Uh, assuming that goes well and it is approved at that point, it will go into the final revisions over the summer to launch. We would be using, I'm assuming, our 2022 data. Um, if there's any comparator pieces, we're still using 21 data. Um, I think that our strongest ROI would actually be next year when we have the ability to do more consultation based on what the anecdotal pieces would be looking for. So as soon as I have a copy of where anecdotal pieces fit into the survey, we'll try to build as much of that in in our consultation this summer. Okay. But typically now we'll know that the 24 year, that is the same information, the same type of questions are asked for from surveys and pieces that we haven't collected to date. So we'll get a good balance this year, but certainly 24, I think we would be stronger. Can, can you give us any um, hints of what's in the ROI? Like how are they? Yep, so it is divided into sections of education, health and wellness, uh, culture, and there are aspects of your collection, your programs, and your services 
that based on the statistics that we gather for the annual survey of public libraries, we plug those in. The formulas have been created by uh, one of the business schools yeah. that identifies what return on investment is. So that part will be clean. We can do that regardless. The social return on investment brings in an extra layer into that where that's where you start looking at what are the stories of use that are of relevance to be releasing. Um, until we actually have that information on the study released, you can't do that research. And because it's coming out in September and we want to report this to council in October, I'm saying next year's we'll be able to build much more of the social component in. But for now, it will just be um, strong return on investment based on statistics and then the types of information that we've already gathered in our consultation. So things like, I'm just trying to understand. Um, so things like the number of student classes would be something under education that would get you a score. It would you say you you do this compared to your peers in this area. Yes. It's compared to our peers, but also the dollars that the community is putting in on um, what the impact, how often we touch. Okay. So, you know, collections, for example, we've always been able to say as libraries, if we buy $20 of a book and one person uses it, you've had a return on investment of one. But if 10 people use it, then you're continually showing that the usage has okay. been done. So moving away from just collections to be able to say there is much more than we do than just books mm -hmm. and really looking at all of our programs, all of our services are- um, So seniors fitness- Seniors fitness- Health and welfare. Correct, but also how our seniors are accessing our building. So as a community hub, how do we start to look at those stats? But how, do, how do you measure that? Sorry. Well, that's a part of it is that this year, because it wasn't part of our annual survey, which we okay. did the information the previous year to collect for the year, there's going to be pieces that we can't fill in okay. because we haven't had those stats. Um, we have what the uh, ministry uses as typical week that you can say based on one week, we can now say what the typical usage would be. Um, but to actually gather actual stats for us, we'll be doing that now okay. for the next year. Okay. So there'll be pieces that we can do cleanly. There'll be pieces that we will opt not to include because we don't feel we have the data. Um, and we'll build those into our data collection and our uh, outcome collection for next year. Sabrina, those social ROIs, can you mention them anyway, even though you wouldn't have hard data? Because I think those are the things that people overlook and don't Certainly. realize the social impact that the library has. Yes. And there may be pieces that we put in that would be, um, although we were talking about the 2022 year and usage, that we are going to look at a typical week in the fall, a typical week in the summer, and say these are typical week usages of 2023, but we're implying them backwards. Um, so we'll find ways to make it you know, strong in what we can stand behind. And then anything that we feel we don't have the information on, we'll just know that these are pieces that will be collected for a future year. Okay. So is there a place for stories? Yes. And that's where we need to get into the anecdotal piece. Um, being that I'm part of the committee, I'm hoping that we'll have early access to the final document, um, as opposed to getting it in September and having to plug it in and go, uh, so that we can use some of the time over the summer to try to get some of that anecdotal piece. Yeah, because that can be- Quantitative, we have. Obviously, we, yeah. we know our quantitative numbers. The, the qualitative, qualitative is always more difficult. Yeah. But we have the summer and our consultation to try to pull that together. But the qualitative is what touches people. And of the course, the yes. is where it touches. When you go to any major campaign, I've worked on millions, and it's not, okay, here are the numbers. We serve this number of people. We do this. We do that. It's the stories. Of course. And that's what we have to use. We have to have those. And those are what any major campaign we've ever done. That's what comes out first. And stories we have and stories we can collect. Yeah. But being able to have the story that fits a criteria. Yes. 
that's the piece that we might not have the right pieces to plug in this year. We'll certainly have that qualitative piece. We just might not have what question 4B says yeah. to have gathered. Correct. But so we'll, we'll work on that. Year, I don't think. And it'll continue to improve year after year. Yeah. Okay. We are in the news, actually. Mm -hmm. This year, oh. this month. Or no, today. It was yesterday. TBM Council Pumps Breaks and Craig Leaf Library Concept. But we don't want to miss the mark on this. It's going to be a clear and pressing matter, said Councillor Sean McKinley. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a picture of us. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. We're looking very serious and thoughtful, just like the library board. <laughs> You guys did a great job. Yeah. Sorry we missed it. It's on the plane. I was just thinking as we had this conversation, you know, the whole ROI thing, is it something we would be building up, as you said, we, you know, we can do this much this year and the next year we add to it. And it made me think about the pace of information going to council mm -hmm. and therefore to the public is we may want to make sure that we're, we, I don't want, a huge dump of information to land in October or something, and right. then um, no one can parse it to really have a good understanding. But if we answer, you know, a letter shortly saying these are some basic corrections, these are, you know, so we do something on a stage stage basis that then people can um, comprehend. Bits and bytes works a lot better. Than yeah. That. Mm -hmm. Nobody's yeah. going to read a twenty-page document. No. Mm -hmm. Even if we do have to do a fairly long business case. For the fall, and I would assume of... then you have a needs assessment that's the big document mm -hmm. and the business case and the ROI. Mm -hmm. It will be a lot to then pull it together. That as you're pulling those out, then there's the final report that we would do that summarizes we each of those and what that tells towards the same the same topic. We may want to ask to be on almost every council or committee the whole agenda for. <laughs> the next several months because we can bring a different piece each time mm -hmm. and uh, even as a deputation I mean, for sure it's being um, seen by the public mm -hmm. and so we can stage that so it's in the ROA you know even, I've just said it so I'm going to say it again um, so I think usage data fits into all of these discussions um, and the projections I don't uh, operating costs like, so that's a hard one until you know what the new bill is. So that, how do we address that? That one is an actual chicken and egg situation because you yeah. can't you can't you possibly can't quantify that. that without doing do, a vision, doing it with a plan. Yeah. So that's we, we can look at the current maintenance program for you know maintenance IT for this building. Um, there's significant aspects of IT that are system wide that wouldn't be duplicated because they're already there. Uh, maintenance for Ellie Shore is, again, sort of like picking a number out of the hat. Yes, it's a comparable size building, but this is a 28-year-old building who has some issues. <laughs> and a new building would not have those issues for 10 years down the line. Um, cleaning services, you know, match for match. That's an easy one. Um, staffing, you know, we know what we would need to do a service model of staffing, and we can look at those pieces. Uh, they would be based on rates of today, uh, but really what the building looks like is going to make that ultimate determination. So we'd have to be very clear that these are pre-designed at best, because if you have a two-story library that's put in a corner, mm -hmm. you're having double the staff because you can't have staff working alone on a floor. You can't have staff um, you know, buildings and services not being maintained by that those team. If it's you know a large building like ours where you can see where you are from side to side, um, that's one way of doing it. Uh, management staff, we wouldn't be looking at new management staff. We would be starting to parse out people to different locations and moving people between sites. So there's pieces that you don't duplicate your management staff. 
but you do have to add on new programming and daily daily people. So we can do those numbers, but it really still is going to be design built. So I think when you do those numbers, you need to go with the the, the one story mm -hmm. version, for example, so that the story that the, yeah, what the think, site that we would be looking at. Yeah, that we would actually want. Um, but I wonder then, do we have to do projections, uh, operating projections for do nothing, actable service, and expanding OES? So we do have to do it for each of those. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that goes into our business case. Okay. Um, let's move on to the community consultation needs assessment. Um, okay, uh, we were planning on doing that anyway. Uh, and so now we have the council endorsement, shall we say, of that uh, plan. Um, Sabrina, have you had any time to put some thought into how you see that process unfolding? Um, what I was thinking of doing prior to yesterday's meeting, um, I don't think would have to be shifted significantly. Um, I envision us doing a ramp up as a campaign that the community knows why we're doing this so that we can schedule probably two town halls um, that might be more of a facilitated, tell us what you want, not just you know sit in rows and hear, <laughs> um, with some kind of activities that would be there. Uh, we could do one in the Craigleaf area. It's always difficult to do Craigleaf because of size. We will most definitely have something that we're doing at the Craigleaf area, and then probably doing another one here in the gallery, just given our size. If we believe it's going to be a larger need, then we would work with the town to access the community center. So again, we have a big enough space. Uh, but even the town's consultation when they used the community center, it was usually maybe a third. If I think we can fit in a gallery without a problem. Uh, we'll do a survey that will be looking at very clear pieces of what people are looking for. Um, there will be some aspect of um, quantitative or pre-mark the ABCs, uh, but if you give people four options and say, which is important to you, they only think of the four options. Mm -hmm. When you give people open-ended opportunities, you tend to get things that maybe we weren't thinking of. Mm -hmm. So it will have to be a combination thereof. Uh, we've always done well with our micro surveys. So I think that's something that we launch again starting in July, where our micro surveys will be one topic, maybe four questions. If you were to do it on a print, it's basically a quarter size of the page. We put them up on Survey Monkey and then we do enticement. You know, we draw. I have no problem with <laughs> if you do it, your name goes in for a draw, and you know, you'll get a, you know this side of town, that side of town, and we'll purchase some, some gift cards. Um, I would like to work with uh, the town from their communication end, just to make sure that there is no question that we have not hit every possible avenue. Uh, the town usually purchases uh, the lawn signs that go into corners of the community. Uh, I'm not sure how effective they are, but that's something that the town does. So I think we should look at that just to make sure mm -hmm. that it isn't a case that our consultation didn't have the same level that anybody comes back later and says, well, I didn't hear about it. We always have that. And I'm sure the town hears that as well. But if we follow sort of the town's method, then we know we've had that. Um, we'll certainly have to do um, types of advertising on this. Um, and then I would like to build in some focus group time that we can look at whether it's one on one, a group of three or four, a group of 10 or 12. Uh, we had great success with our consultation where sometimes we thought, you know, the entire community would show up and only two people came and we had fantastic information from those two people. 
And then other ones we thought were going to be a small one. And, you know, the circle was so big across the gallery that we were trying to figure out if we should redesign the room because it was hard to hear people. Um, you know, I think we had about 35 people that were in a short consultation on senior services. I remember, and, I was yeah. at that one, it was quite amazing. Yeah, and you know, there were places where like, you couldn't see another person because it was so far. Um, that's a great, you know, that's great. So we'll build everything from the small one-on-ones up. Um, that's reaching our community. Then we need to have the layer of how else we reach our community outside of us. And that's when we're going to the village association. That's when we're going to rate payers, whether it's a case that we have access to their meeting, whether it's a case that we are doing a one on one with their committee or their board. Um, we'll work with them, however, they're able to work with us. Yeah. We've done similar things with the churches in the past. I think working with our churches again, um, anywhere where we think they have a segment of the population that is maybe thinking in a certain way, uh, you know, like when you're coming to church, you're not necessarily thinking about the library, but we can get them in and say, what is it that is needed? So there are a number of those types of groups, committees, associations. Um, there's new societies that are just starting, like the uh, Historical Society, Blue Mountain Historical Society, we are a partner with them, but again, coming to them and saying, you know, how do we fit into what your needs are? And we know a lot of the pieces the museum is doing, but how does that build into the library service aspect that we need? And where's the gap that may or may not be East End or Ellie Shore, you know, where it lives might not matter, but we know it lives somewhere, but it's a new thing, new space. Um, and then we'll start to parcel out the gaps in service from the specific East End pieces, because I think we have two questions there. We have what does Craigleaf want? And then we still have the what's missing in our library service. It makes sense if we're doing a Craigleaf build that the what's missing gets moved into that build. New technology, new building, new electrical, new sound, all the things that you would need on that end. Um, and if the Craig Leaf doesn't happen, we can't say, well, all of those pieces don't matter anymore because they are still limiting our service. We thought we had a natural fit in one building, but then it comes back to, well, you still have to put those services in because this is a 28 year old building and library services are not the same services that were planned in 1994. So we have to be able to do that next level. And we have outgrown the ability to do what's needed in this building and having the second branch allow us to expand those newer pieces, the 21st century aspects of library service. And if not, then we have to look at the expansion. And we're showing them that we're being fiscally responsible because we're not expecting everything in both places. No. And that's one of the pieces that we had talked about uh, when we did our previous feasibility study um, and needs assessment. Um, that was a case of the building A, building B, and knowing that, you know, you, you're going to have a little bit of duplication of collection, but you only need one team space. And the team space is important that maybe through uh, demographics, we know that's pregnant. And we know here is the school age. Well, the school age moved to teen. So at some point you can see things swapping and that's fine because that's how we grow and how we pivot for our community. But we know somewhere has to have teen as a specialty and somewhere has to have youth as a specialty and somewhere has to have the maker space. We don't need two maker spaces. We only need the one and it has to be good. So don't put two mediocre in, mm -hmm. and certainly don't put two of them that have the exact same equipment in. Um, from a community end, we don't need that specialized services in both places, but we need it in our municipality. Mm -hmm. So are you That's saying that part of a needs assessment <laughs> is really a system-wide needs, needs assessment? Because the motion, okay. <laughs> uh, 
specifically is about the build, the pregnancy build. Yes. Um, so I'm hearing you say that's that's a fundamental piece, but it is a fundamental piece because we know that those things that are missing, we intended to put those into the Craigley's build. Right. So there's going to be sort of a uh, subset of pieces that system wide would naturally go into Craigley because why would you update an electrical system that works just fine now? but can't handle more at LES. So what happens is we get a needs assessment that's really focused around Craigley, but then we get into the business case. We say, well, equitable services in Craigley, this is where these things go. Uh, you want to just expand LES, well, this is the impact of that. Correct. So then you parse out from the needs assessment what has to fit into each scenario that we present in the business plan. Correct. And plus two, like you're, and it's nice to, like you said, you include all those groups and all those associations. And a lot of times they just appreciate being, being, having That's a seat at the table. Right. And when you've got now that newly formed working group, you know, then you get the more support that comes in too, right? So it, it always changes the tune of that room whenever it's full of people there that don't want to see something built, want to see something happen. For their and we, we've heard from BMRA in the past. Um, and members and people who stated they were representing the organization in the past, they are library supporters. They are not Craigley library supporters. And they said that they couldn't look at the previous package because Craigley was a big piece of that. And they felt it should be here. We're going to hear those pieces and we need to represent that in our study. Um, and we're probably going to have the many people that say, I didn't know there was a library or nobody goes to libraries mm -hmm. or who needs a library because we have Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and those are things that we know. The statistics, the research, it's available to counteract those pieces. Um, what I want to hear from our community is not only the what do they want, but also and the what don't they want, but do they want and why don't they want something in a location? Because that That's comes fair. forward. Mm -hmm. My concern with that is we are talking about a community of Craigley that has to have at least a 25 year life cycle is usually what you're looking at for your service plan. And many of the people that we are talking about building a building for have simply put a deposit down on a piece of property that is conceptual. So we don't have access to them. That's what I would like to try to wrap my head around and I'll have some conversations with uh, colleagues on how to do that. You go to the... Working with developers, but we need to see is there a way to even find those people? Because usually number one on your survey is are you a resident? No. Thank you very much for participating. <laughs> Out. <laughs> we need the, are you, um, yeah, are you a home buyer who is waiting to locate, yeah. relocate into? Right. Um, so we certainly have to adjust the way a survey would be designed, but then how do we target and find those people? Um, QR codes. You know, developers won't give you their list of no, people. But you could stick it in. Well, but there's, 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 yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll have to be thinking kind of in an interesting way of how do we find those. And I'm not sure, and I'll ask obviously the town, um, I'm not sure that that's ever been done in some of these studies. No. That it's simply put out a lawn sign on a busy yeah. corner meeting is on Saturday, yeah. um, advertising in the paper, put out on a press release. This would be a different way of doing it. There are um, population projections that the government has somewhere where they show the growth. Hospitals use it all the time mm -hmm. for when they're planning to build something. They'll say that, you know, this community is mm -hmm. growing faster than this. And, and we, have that. we have the heat maps. We have those pieces through council. We certainly can get that data. We can correspond with um, other agencies as well as uh, stats can and census. It's the actual homeowner who says, I have paid my hundred thousand dollar deposit and I move in in 27. I think the face those are the ones that are the ones to find. The, I know at Windfall, there was an existing Facebook group that's very strong and they're very um, action oriented. They're raising money to support 
So a woman who works there who has cancer and they're raising all kinds of money because she has to get her Jeep fixed, like mm -hmm. they're social activists. So some of, and then some people who are buying into that development will be part of that group. Absolutely. And then some of those people have connections with Blue Vista. And when I talked to Pam yesterday, she was rhyming off all kinds of other developments that I hadn't heard of. So there are definitely- So there may be people who have already bought mm -hmm. in and are starting to form those types of pieces mm -hmm. so that they know when they do move in, they've got the community that they yes. want. And so we'll be looking at those things. Yeah. And depending on how far along the development is, I know when our house was being built, we would drive by our empty lot and see the dirt and see the <laughs> hole get bigger. I see, you know, you put some signs out on those places and right. people are going to see them. And maybe it's connecting and including the fans and stuff into our strategic plan so that we utilize their connections. Yes. yes. And that just takes me back briefly about the key, the whole key supporter thing, right? because Marie and I play tennis with Pam. And so this is where you get your own personal networks and you now know, which I didn't know that Pam was that interested or engaged. So it's an important person for us to talk to. Yeah. yeah. So that's just off the top of my head on what I think we need to do. Um, it'll be a busy summer and busy fall, but I think that we have the ability to do it physically, you know, to be able to do this type of work. Um, our numbers of community engagement have blown away any other uh, town survey in the past. So, you know, we go everywhere though. So, you know, every Sunday we're out talking to people at the market. These are the things that, you know, when you say that we had 3000 contacts and 3000 participants, um, what is the number that we, oh, I don't think we have it on this one, but we had over 3,000 participants um, in the strap plant. You know, council's uh, notation mm -hmm. just recently was 800, and it was a really mm -hmm. good number. It was one of their better numbers. Um, I know when um, BMRA had put through a study and there were, you know, a few dozen um, respondents you got to go with who you have, but we've been very good at casting a broad net. Finding yes. it. So we'll we'll keep plugging on the thought process and come up with a full strategy. Um, uh, I'm just wondering if people feel like they need a bit of a break uh, or just want to keep press on for a little bit longer anyway. So the next, um, yes. I'm now starting to, anyone who's worked with me in the past knows that I, I think in tables, <laughs> and so now I'm starting to create that, and just so you know, where, we're, where I'm trying to get to is a bit of a, what are the topics, what is the schedule, and what is the, how do we do each of these, so yeah. that's where we're, that's where I'm kind of trying to get us to. Um, so the next topic I had was the whole Craig Lee working group connections. Um, and at one point, you would suggest that we invite them to a meeting this summer. Once they have terms of reference, then at least we know they're they're established, but not truly established. Uh, the terms of reference are coming soon, but then they're putting a call out to new members. Um, even if it is just the two people who are currently the ones who sort of brought that to council and are those two working members with more coming, we can start with what is there and then continue on as new members come on, come on board. So I, yes, possibly a conversation over the summer to see what they're doing and where their mandates are so that we know how we intersect, if nothing else. I think that's probably in even just starting with the two of them, because they're, they have both of the Craig Leaf roots and the uh, ratepayers, and you know, have a conversation with them where they think they're going, this, what their topics are, and where do they intersect with ours, and how we might work together. Uh, so, how we might be able to dispel some misbeliefs too, right? Yes. There could be some misconceptions somewhere. You yep. can say, no, no, actually. Yeah. And then that changes the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just saying. So, so I think, again, getting in on the ground floor with a discussion on that. I don't think we belong on that. I, 
a call going out to, to members of the public, I don't think it makes any sense for us to volunteer as a member of the public because we want to have a board to board right. relationship. So um, I think probably having a, a fairly early meeting with them, which may not be July or August because we have to start to figure out our schedule. Maybe August, September might be the better time frame. But. Okay. Um, another topic was the um, board council um, meeting, uh, like individual meetings. Uh, and I was thinking that we might want to create overall messaging. Uh, and then address specific issues that were raised by the specific individuals uh, at uh, the meeting yesterday, so that we can speak to them generally, but also start going to what their particular concerns are. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually sort of see, I'm sorry to see um, a series of task force or ad hoc committees of this, of the board, to pull out these different topics. Um, and then the last one, of course, had been the multi-use study. Can, sorry, can one of the mm -hmm. FAQs be about, uh, or key messages be about why um, e-readers are not the only feature? Um, well, me... well, you know, because why do we really need a, the undertone was everything's moving online. Certainly, so we, we have stats on how many digital checkouts we have um, as part of our year in review. We had 32,686 downloads from people who have an e-reader, yeah. but they still get the content from us. Yeah. So 32,000. But how, how, how does that compare to hard books? Uh, that, that, how many? Hard times? books, we had 59,000. So somebody's going to say, oh, is 32 going up and is 59 going down? Oh, yeah, yeah, so that's, I think I would like to have some a consistent Certainly. fact to use that there, because I think that is... Uh, because that was a point that was raised. And these may be pieces right. that fit also into our newsletter as a monthly mm -hmm. corner. Yeah. We used to have the board corner, which in the new e-newsletter has just been like pushing the key messages. Um, but maybe the board corner is taking on, I mean, it's only one a month, uh, but really like diving into a stat and what it means mm -hmm. and why it's important that dispels a myth. And mm -hmm. that could be our I first mean, are still going strong, right? Yeah. Like, so... Well, maybe the online is going up, but that just means the total is going up. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Or more people reading. Yeah. Because it's more. The reason why chapters and readers. Top ten businesses in North America. Yeah. Yeah. People spend money there. <laughs> it's not all e readers. It's a lot of iPad readers. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that's something that we can put in as part of our advocacy plan, and the board can determine areas that we'd like to hit, but I can use that for our first one. It'll be going out uh, in July. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Good flag to raise. <laughs> huh? Good flag to raise. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go and try to summarize <laughs> which <laughs> this might be helpful to you. <laughs> Keeping notes. Okay, so back. we record them. Oh, <laughs> I need to go back a few times. So I think in terms of the multi-use study, um, really our first and only step we identified is find out the scope because we don't really know if we belong in it. And then we have the complication that the council motion puts us in there, but we need more information to sort that out. So I guess that's step number one on that topic. Um, the the community consultation needs assessment. I think that might involve a few board volunteers working with you on that, um, Sabrina. Uh, and that is something that's going to have to move fairly quickly. So keep that in mind. You know, so, so when you're saying needs, what, what is it that we're uh, yeah. pulling together? Well, the list that you gave us was doing two town halls, um, you know, 
and asking what they want. So, so, what, so, oh, so you're looking for where the gaps in service are? Is that what the needs is? The actual study, doing the study. So if we're doing town halls, we need people who are going to be there with us. Oh, yeah. So okay. like, if we're doing a focus group, having another, you know, which board member will be at which focus group, you don't so have to say you'll be following. The whole strategy of how we're going to deliver, uh, well, how we're going to find information with respect to needs. So, right. so it, because I, I understand about these different forums, but it's what information you're trying to seek at those forums. Yes, and being present at and, and participating in as well. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay. Got that. No? Okay. okay. Um, the crazy work we've kind of touched on is inviting them early on, and then we can figure out what the uh, um, next steps would be after that. Do you look them correctly? Me? No. You're going to have yeah. right between here and there. Yeah, but you did. Um, I lived on the very border, the edge of the town of the mountains, because I was beside the Scandinavian spot. Across the street was Collingwood, mm -hmm. and I was town of the mountains. Okay. That's where I used to live, and now I'm at Gray Road 40 and 26. Mm -hmm. So you're closest to the east. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Am I halfway? Halfway. I'm right down to the halfway point, right? Okay. Um, the ROI, you don't need anything from us for a while, do you? Yeah. You can try and build some of the social anecdotal stuff into the needs assessment. I don't mind seeing it if you can share anything. Mm -hmm. I it be but do you have any like drafts or anything? Um, no. All of the meetings they hold the document and share with you. So yes, <laughs> screenshots. Yeah. Um, uh, but ROI would be September. Okay, so you don't need really anything from us anyway until not then. at this point. And I'll look to build as many of those uh, qualitative pieces into the research base and our needs assessment. Okay. Um. Key messaging for board council, um, individual meetings. So that might be something that we brainstorm at board meetings, or it might be something that we have a small group start working on that. Any? It would be good for us, if you're interested, to plan the meeting. We had talked about that at the April uh, training meeting that we look at the key supporters from the lens of what topic we're working on. So if we're working on uh, an East End Hub, that we look at the key supporters from that lens. If you're looking at um, matters that are, you know, board interests, that you're looking at it from that end. That we try to hone in on certain things because we know there's certain people in the community who have information or, um, are helpful in those areas. Um, so thinking about a Craig League library, for example, um, take a look at who would be the potential key supporters in that area and how do we start making connections with them, correct? Okay. So I would see that as being probably a, a separate meeting. Right. And I know we did that with the previous board it was a good hour and a half of just the brainstorm portion of it that we did. Yeah. Right. And that should be done fairly early because we may want to be approaching those people to make sure they participate in the needs assessment. We are getting complicated. <laughs> Um, and then at the end of the day, we have the business plan and the development of that, but there's a lot of elements feeding into that early. And, the, and Sabrina, that's, that's going to be huge falling on you. Mm -hmm. So I want to say, circle back to that a little bit later in terms of how we support you on that. Yeah. So I'm just thinking out loud. 
So the multi-use, we basically said, starting out really with um, communication, the staff level to find out what the scope is. So there's nothing we need to worry about as a board at this point on that. Um, the ROI is a little bit further down the road uh, and something to worry about at that stage. Needs assessment is early and important. Mm -hmm. So we need to come back to that. Um, Fairly working group is maybe just an invitation to a meeting. Question becomes how we structure that agenda. Um, and we may not have an answer to that yet. Um, board council individual meetings, that is a fairly important one to get started on. And uh, key supporters is an important one to get started on. And then the business plan will all be something later on. <laughs> um, how do we make these things happen? Somebody's really loud in there. Yeah, they're on a mic. Is there? They're on a mic, yes. Oh. So the other piece we have to look at, which is, I think, will roll between both the needs assessment and the business plan. And possibly it is looking at our year in review presentation to council, is looking at some of these stats. So we don't want there to be a feeling that we're not answering the questions about usage because the needs assessment will have pieces, the business plan will have pieces, uh, the year in review has pieces, but short of making an actual presentation where we hit all of these questions of usage, none of them typically would hit that. So I think that's another piece is I have to actually think about this various stat quest questions that they had general usage, Ellie Shore usage, what pregnant usage could be, um, simply pulling out the L9Ys from as a postal code and seeing what's there. Um, there's a bit of the, if you build it, they will come commentary because we know many of our Craigley community members are not using services because it's just not there for them. And we hear regularly, I'm not coming there because that doesn't do what I need. Um, so, so assumptions would have to be placed on that. Um, and then of course, the who would be there in the future falls under the rest of the pieces. So I see some of these stats that they asked for having a potential of being very divided and pieces. So I'll also have to be looking at how to bring them together so that it isn't a case that we're constantly saying, but that's in the next report. <laughs> So that's just sort of a piece that I want the board to be aware of that the way they worded the statistical information doesn't necessarily live in any one report alone, mm -hmm. unless it's its own data analysis day. I don't think it should be. I think there should be just a data piece that shows, you know, not just volumes, but per capita mm -hmm. again and by by location and by age group and that and then we can just do some trends yep. from before COVID to because you know we, we have to project it out because it's gonna look like everything's out of whack right with COVID. Yep. And I, I, I'm happy to to work on that with you. So that might be a separate report that feeds into yes. the other ones, but that we still need to present as a deputation very separately to council. Yeah, sort of a, you ask for stats, here you go. <laughs> because they're going to be embedded in the needs assessment and they're going to be embedded in the business plan, mm -hmm. but they won't be front and center in the way that they're asking. Be so lost. I, think, yeah. I think that that's, that whole stat piece has to be its own beast that we then use in the other places later. And Joy, you've indicated interest in participating in that. Yeah, well, I mean, I do that all the time. 
So yeah, I, I, I might as well. I mean, not not the library, but mm -hmm. it should hopefully be a transferable skill. <laughs> Better be. <laughs> my life. <laughs> I don't want to speak for Joanne, but I think Joanne might also be interested in that. She's very much interested in the outcome piece. So if nothing else, her interest in how we measure outcomes might be informed by the type of statistics that we're actually mm -hmm. collecting to, to look at that next piece of the ROI as well. The ROI, okay. So we can ask her when she returns if she wants to participate as well. Okay, so that would end up being just you know, stats generally um, ROI included in that. And so the target for that, so we want to make that a sort of separate piece that's coming forward I to council. So. Is it coming forward in two stages? Because the ROI is later. Yes, I um, think it's separate and distinct. Okay. Okay. I, I can see a tie between key, like reaching out to key supporters and the town hall slash focus groups. Those kind of dovetail a little bit. Absolutely. So I'd like, I'm interested in that aspect. And I'll help with that too if you want more help. And I just want to go back to the stats. I actually think there is a bit of an overlap in our life. Not so much that because we don't have it now and it will give us specific information, but we can try to look and structure some um, numbers, some ratios uh, according to the categories of health and welfare. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. So I think that can... it informs all of the yes. other areas. I just don't think it should be the same report and presentation no. to mm -hmm. council, uh, especially if we get put into deputations. We have 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to give a very lengthy report. Um, we can request a longer period of time, but that doesn't mean we get more than 10 minutes. So when we're coming back with these, these pieces, uh, which is why we did the joint meeting, so that it was truly a joint meeting and that dialogue is what we needed to hear. If we come in with a stat report, there's only so many slides you can get done in 10 minutes. They can ask you questions for as long as they choose to, but your 10 minutes is your only bit of presentation. So that is why there's no way we can come in with multiple pieces. We're going to be hard pressed to get through any one of these in a 10 minute deputation without it being a very superficial conversation. And that's why the one-on-one uh, -on -one pairings is important because yeah. then we know this is coming to council. We can meet in advance and you know give them a chance to ask some questions. So there's no surprises right. for them or us. I actually meeting. think that your idea of doing a joint meeting, the meeting within a meeting was like picture perfect because then you all got an opportunity to speak right multiple times. And and the floor is yours, kind of thing, right? And Madam Mayor would say, Chair, you know, and you you had the equal opportunity. The deputation stuff yeah. doesn't give you that. And, and you know, there's we understand there is hierarchy in the board governance relationship with council. Um, but any board, any of our our local boards or boards by acts. It's too difficult to come in as a deputation unless yes, you just want to say, I'm coming in to give the year of review statistics. Four minutes we watch the, the film, and then I give you a few highlights and I take questions. Like that is what a deputation is for, not to do lion's share of, of work that a board is doing on behalf of its community. Especially for the amount you'd like to put into this. Yeah. I would say you still the dual boards or the dual meeting. As really much as possible. Yeah. 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 We certainly worked out the logistics of that mm -hmm. yesterday. And uh, the mayor was great in uh, talking to me about it and working working through the process. So I thought that was it worked. That was good. Would yeah. key supporters be able to attend a future joint meeting like it's that? It's an open meeting. Yeah. Anybody can come. So we can invite them. So yeah. part part of the process um, with council, and we have the same thing here. Um, is the uh, public input on the agenda. So there was a point when the mayor asked, uh, said, we have no other community members present because the community members came actually a bit later. Um, so that's where members of the public would have the opportunity to speak prior to any big conversations. 
um, based on reports that were submitted. And then usually at the end of the segment, that same public input is added so that once they've heard what's said, they can have their three minutes again. Right. So, uh, you yeah. know, if members are present, if community members are present, that would have been a piece that would have been handled. But the mayor did say, we have no, so we're going to skip that piece. Mm -hmm. right. Do we have an agenda for another training or some special meeting that addresses um, the key supporters initiative mm -hmm. uh, and focused around the East End? Uh, and I think that needs to come in before we do, we're into the consultation needs assessment. So I think it's an important aspect of that. So it would mean sort of a July meeting. Um, and uh, I think maybe the board council messaging is another aspect of that meeting. So not so much a regular board meeting as more like what you did in, in April, which I sadly had to miss, uh, and start to tackle those question. So we've got the framework in place when we start to do the actual ease assessment and the consultation. Right. And then if after that, if um, some of us want to say, I can work more deeply on that, then we can uh, create a, a task force or whatever to support the work in that. But maybe July, the July meeting focused on that. That makes sense to people. Mm -hmm. okay. And earlier is better because we'll need, we'll probably need much of the eight weeks between July and August. I kind of think we'll probably spread a bit into September uh, with some of the wrap up on consultation. And in the past, we've done consultation and we had dates and they were all set. And then you hear something that, or you start doing your processing of information and you're okay, we need to actually break that out because that was you know, a nugget that we now need to actually have a discussion on that as a whole meeting. So we may find that parts of September end up going into new things that we weren't expecting to hear that we need to spend more time on. Okay, fair enough. Do we need a motion about a July meeting um, focused uh, training session? Like how, how are we structured motions around the April meeting? Um, we don't have to have a motion for it. It's just the calling of the chair. Okay. So you can call for an in-camera session based on our criteria from the okay. Public Libraries Act, and that certainly will fit under Clause B, uh, identifiable individuals. Okay. So that would be a closed meeting, and we're looking at early July, and this would be in lieu of our currently booked July date. Partly because we have heard that that really interferes with a number of, <laughs> number of people who have other plans. Okay. Okay. So we will come back to look at that date a little bit later. And we can do that right offline. It doesn't have to be announced at this point. Okay, great. Um, so I think that's almost two hours on this topic. So I'd like to call that <laughs> an end to that. And I also like to suggest we just take a a five minute break to stretch our legs before we get back to the regular agenda. That work for people. Now, in here, you said July the 20th, we're going to use our annual policy review. So, will that just be deferred to August then? Then that we'll have to figure out. <laughs> Give me one second. Let me just get us. Sorry, Zoom is very well buried here. I'm going to. Okay. And there's no way to sign it either. So while you work on that, so we're going to try and um, move through stuff that's more there for information uh, and uh, get to things that uh, we actually need to discuss. So I'll be asking <laughs> you not to ask too many questions. Oh, what is it? We lost the vibe yesterday. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting process. Yeah. Yeah. I think Brandy had to deal with my survival afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is going live now. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we're back and we're now on to um, the action plan of the for June. And unless there's something important you want to discuss, um, we will see this again in another month anyway. Can we move on from that? Okay, thank you.
Um, there are a few um, items that were attached, not so much for discussion, but to make sure that you had copies if you happen to miss the session. And that would be the um, training uh, deck from the board assembly meeting and from the board training with council. So that's really there for your information. And then the next item, which is for discussion, um, is uh, the year in review, 2022. And we have, I believe, the video to see. Uh, we've done the last few years, we've done as a video. So this is already oh. here. So yeah, you will have to turn around. <laughs> Give me one second. I'll have to share my screen. Uh, so every year, as Lori said, we do a video. We really pared this one down this year. We've been at like the 10 minute mark on the last two, um, but there was much more explanation needed because of lockdown situations and mm -hmm. pandemic. So this really is a true overview of the year. I have no sound. Ooh. I can hear a moment ago, and it worked just fine. And now, of course, when I share it, <laughs> 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 let me try one sharing and see if it's going to. If you're doing it on Zoom, you have to click something. Yeah, I usually do share What's screen. Nice. And I'm actually sharing my screen, and then there are two buttons underneath to include the audio. There we go. There we go. <laughs> There's that. We are again first in our membership and first in our number of programs and program events. Thanks to the Ontario Trillium Foundation for Zillion Communities Fund, we are able to hybridize both the library at Bellagiore and Boardroom allowing us to offer both in-person and virtual programs. The gallery began full capacity programs with 11 exhibits and nearly 29,000 visits. Many of our partners confirmed with the regular programs in the gallery, and our own speaker series and the ACT guests were strongly attended. The person, online, and in hybrid programs were not there. Library service has never stopped for any people in but it sure is great to see everyone who joined our services on the same. We were at the community school, the church, and classroom visits here in the Holy Shore, and the weekly classroom visits, and the youth of the community have regular access to the school. With the donation of the Baby Grand Canal, the school also used the gallery to read the classification. Our creator space and library space content continue to be expanded, adding medical and health related staff housing, access to local and event parks, classic gaming, tech toys, and work from home center logistics. Our archives and museum also with more than $406,000 invested through Ontario Canada's Community Culture and Recreation Funds. The museum saw comprehensive renovations that saved the building for future years. With extensive wood rot, the shore was repaired and restabilized. Exterior cladding, windows, doors, and roof were in place, and the color was changed back to the original 1886 colors from when the pregnant station was stopped on the Grand Trunk Rail Line. During the renovations closure, our students took the opportunity to dig into the collection, 
Following several years of staff engagement, staff status, we got the realization to control certain things in the staff. We want to see how to deny the staff and compensation of graduation, resulting in 100% of our staff. This shift would be the and appropriate settings. Additionally, retirements and living vacancy can be used to move our part time and permanent employees into full time. We thank our staff for staying with us during the coming years. We also end in turn with the big new mountains coming up. On the incident of the 2022 board, we did vigorous developments in that field. The CEO and the manager of community engagement to produce an innovative, highly community form for New York City. It drew 5,000 comments, 105 events, and more than 2,100 participants. This is planned in partnership with our community to build the ramp requested by. Nice. So the compendium document that goes with that is here, and that will give a bit more of the stats bit for those who want to have stats. So that's why we have that piece. Oh, there. So gallery visits, first of all, is that for the art or is that for a presentation? For the art. Okay. So obviously we had higher numbers in 21 for that because we were only doing virtual art. Mm -hmm. So now more people are coming into the gallery to see the art. So we don't have as many online, but still 2,300 is a good number for visits on our uh, various showcases per month. And what's, what's, excuse me, what's our town population again? Um, well, I guess that depends on which number you'd like to use. Um, we're just over the 7,500 as our full-time residents. Okay. Uh, we're just over 15,000 when you're looking at all residents. I use the 15,000 number uh, just because I serve the community, regardless if they come on a Saturday or if they come on a Tuesday. Okay. I think the town has made that shift as well, that they're trying to look more at their usage from whole as opposed to breaking it down into full-time or part-time because the service still needs to be provided. So Lori, unless you had any- Yes. Comments, questions, or concerns, I think we are good with that. It's the case of approving for release. Thank you. I'll move to the first. Oh, okay. Come on. Seconder. Julia. So that is uh, receive your review and approve for release. All in favor? Thank you. That's carried. I will put in a deputation request this afternoon when we're done. And hopefully we'll be able to get this to council for uh, July. Okay. So when we're doing, when we know we've got a deputation coming, we should, we want to make sure everybody knows and as much as possible, we all get out, mm -hmm. even though it's probably mostly me or you speaking, <laughs> or in this case, the video. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because we want to make sure they get to know us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Thank you. Yeah, the next item is uh, CEO update for June. And unless there's particular questions on that, I'd like to move to 
that on a quick break. That will the report unless there's questions. Okay, seeing none, then we will move on to the inclusion, diversity, equity, and access policy. And again, if there's a lot of discussion, we can defer this to another meeting. But um, if it's fairly straightforward and you're comfortable with what you've read, then we can just have a motion to approve. I thought it was well written. Fairly well written. Thank you. It fits right into our strategic plan. We had themes, mm -hmm. one of which was um, equity and diversity. This expands on the larger process of it. This is also a new, a new policy that um, we've never had a policy statement before. And uh, it's a requirement of the accreditation process that uh, the library is going through at the moment. Yes. So, and Julia, I'll cut you off. Yeah, no, it was not talking about that. It just um, reminded me of uh, dry cleaning story time and whether we, we were moving forward to offer that this summer. Um, I did not move forward just because there is very difficult to find somebody right now. Obviously, Pride Month, you don't want to do it simply because it's Pride Month. Uh, we did want to do that in the summer. I'm thinking <laughs> that the summer is very heavy right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I am working with our partners, uh, Collingwood, Wasaga Beach, we're partnering together and bringing in the same people that went. So I'm working with them to be able to tap into their, uh, their, uh, yeah, their people, their staff. It, it seems that the, um, uh, the counter protesters are outweighing the actual protesters. So I thought that was good. Mm -hmm. That's good, yes. Okay. So do you need a motion? I do. Um, I still need Chris. Thank you. Second. Second. And that's to approve this policy. All in favor? Thank you. That's good. Okay, other business. Um, we are planning um a notice of policy. This is a policy notice um for things that were going to come up in July and may now come up in August. But the fact is that we have a notice, so we now know it's pending. So my plan for that is so everybody does know, um, policies will be sent to you sometime after this meeting. Um, we usually try to give a few weeks, even if it was the July meeting, just because it's, it's likely. Um, you're going to be getting all of the governance and anything that's annual that has to be done, and then a few that had to be changed just based on our accreditation. And it just gives you the ability then to plan your own timing around them. Some people fly through policy and other people, it's like going to the dentist. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay, so now we're on to the audited statements. And um, so I want to open the floor to any questions on that. And if it's really you think you need to introduce anything you're about to do, slash. Um, I'm not sure what the comfort level is of our board. This is our first audit for this board. Um, so I don't want to break it down too much if you're feeling confident with it. I know many people have been on boards before. Uh, we use the auditing firm of council uh, each year, and there's a resolution on here following. Part of the Public Libraries Act states that the board selects their own auditor. We choose or have chosen in the past to use council's auditing firm because council is doing our financial uh, uh, work for us. We approve it, they cut the checks. Uh, so technically it's all on their checking account and it saves money and time because part of the larger council audit is including us already. So we simply have to pay for them to do the file work showing what our pullouts are. If we were to do an audit of our own, it would be significantly more expensive and they would still have to go into council and that would be more work for council to do that twice. Um, so that is why we have historically kept the same firm. Um, we are in good standing. Uh, there's no issues there. If you looked at the notes, there's no notes of concern. 
Um, there's the same sort of non-for-profit non commentary um, about um, cash always being an issue. We never can confirm cash, and there's always that little warning in there. Mm -hmm. And every non-for-profit who has either donations has that in there, or anyone who takes cash is in there. Um, our physical cash on site is very small, you know, 50 cents for a photocopy. <laughs> um, our bigger purchases tend to go through our point of sale system, and that, again, has a secondary level of tracking, which, which supports that. Never had issues. We support with council. Um, so outside of that, I think the notes are there, the information is there. Uh, we do have the surplus that is identified, and that will be something that council will be writing that check back to us once we've approved these uh, those notes. And that's, again, based on our agreement that then we're holding those reserves for investment, how, council, or how the board sees fit, and to identify where it goes. One of the things you've already identified is that a portion of that surplus, I believe it was 75,000, it might have been 70,000, is being held not for the 24, but for the 25 budget, where we know that's where we have kind of a bubble that's going to hit us. And that gets us through until sort of the council amounts would catch up to what the salary study put us into uh, a few years back. So there were no surprises or no... Mm -hmm. Nothing you weren't expecting? No, no. And if there was anything, um, the great thing about that is, you know, I have done finance for a library in the past. Um, I am not a qualified finance manager. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do the work, but we have a bank of people at Town Hall who all have expertise in doing just that. So if there was an issue, um, those are things that are usually addressed immediately at the end of a month when the statement comes in and little corrections can get made along the way if anything ever was to happen. So for us to get to audit with a question would be under yeah. Does anyone have any questions at all about this? Okay. I'll move to accept. Okay. I'll just Fine. take note of your comment that you're not a financial manager you are a financial manager mm -hmm. certified certified yes i am That's and good. i have i have been doing this now for <laughs> a few decades but i do not have a credential nor a degree in that and those of you that know me know that when i don't have them i tend to go and get another degree just for the sake of it <laughs> but i have promised my family and my colleagues that i will do no more <laughs> So I will bank on the the legal credentials of counsel to support yeah. us in those matters. Yeah. So can I just ask, uh, why is it still called a draft? How did it it's a draft until you approve. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I have, Sean has moved it, we have a seconder. Uh, okay, Pat, any other discussion? So I'm sorry, we should, you're correct in the resolution, we should amend that so that the draft comes off. So the board okay. is approving the 2022 audited financials. Thank you, that, that was, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you very much, that's carried. And I'm sorry, I missed Chris and... Sean, Jude, Sean. Pat. Pat, Seth oh, there's no one here. Thank you. you. <laughs> Um, and uh, so I'd like to move in seconder that the board approve the town of the Blue Mountains 2023 audit firm as our auditing firm. Yeah, yeah, the hour as the Blue Mountains public library audit. I didn't read the motion exactly as it is on the page. Sorry. <laughs> no, it, it, it's correct the way you read it. Yes. Better than what's on the page. Never mind. Okay, good. Never mind. Uh, seconder. Chris, thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. That is carried. That was fast. Okay, now we have the finance report. Um, so there's sort of two major parts of this, and, and uh, in my uh, the current standing of accounts and funds, as well as the actual variance report. 
Um, so can we maybe start with the variance report mm -hmm. and see if there's any uh, questions or anything, so anything you think you should comment on? So this is Q1 I do have through uh, the end of May. So we were just a bit late getting Q1. Uh, at our next meeting, we'll be looking at uh, the second quarter, which ends in June. Uh, I think the biggest thing for you to be aware of is even when you're looking at them in quarters, not all areas spend evenly from month to month. Uh, certainly, if you ever have a concern why something is at 100% or close to it early in the year, or something hasn't had any activity, it usually means that there's a billing on an annual basis. Um, I don't have any concerns. I don't really have any comments. Um, we do have, um, we have realized some of the federal grants that we had on there. Uh, we have three um, interns that we have applied for, two of which have been approved. And actually, just yesterday, they increased the $11,000 intern to a $13,000 payment. So it's an extra $2,000. Um, we're still waiting on the third. So those are things that we don't hire the person unless we have the funds. Uh, but we are usually given money on about 50% uh, is what they confirm. And then occasionally, we can get as high as 85%. If others don't take the interns, they'll give successful our library is the money and we've been very successful in being able to up that number throughout the year. So just so you know, the federal grants are being realized at this point. So column on the balance variance report, do you want it? it says budget 22. Did that one say yes? Where am I? Ah, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. this is, we're in 2023. Yeah. I'm still in 22 because I'm doing my audit reports. Yes. So that would be for Q1 of 23. There's an amount here, $1,500 budgeted for the strap plan at the very bottom. Is that money that we can access for some of the needs assessment? Yeah. So the $1,500 was listed under the larger area of administration and it's an event. Uh, so the intention was that the board would do the typical two town halls uh, and that that's usually a little bit of advertising, coffee, tea, cookies. So certainly part of the strategic plan is within your purview to say it's not just a touchstone on how are we doing with our activities, but we make it very geared towards the needs assessment, what it needs to be done. Okay, so that would could be used for some of the stuff that's happening this summer. Yes. Okay, but probably not enough for everything that we need to have. Correct. On the plate for this summer, based on yesterday's discussion. Okay. Um. Maybe to. Okay. So let's move on to the current standing of the accounts and funds. That one. Can you explain the expected from TBM numbers? So we have funds that we're still expecting the town to write a check over to us. Um, and some of them were designated because they were for, and it's your ability to change the designation because councils, our agreement doesn't say that because it was capital for furniture, it needs to stay as capital for furniture. You can make the decision that we need to use it for another purpose, but we do have a portion that is designated for furniture that was in there and a designation for that 70 or 75,000, which I'd have to go back and look for savings for um, wages in 25. So that is the part that we currently have as designated. And then the balance of that would be going into an open reserve that you would not need to pass any resolutions to change. The land reserve fund is another one that is worth noting. Um, we have investments that were uh, started off as a lower amount. We've made money on investments as, as we've gone. And that was leftover funding from the Ellie Shore project. So money that was put aside for Ellie Shore to be retrofit. So there is now 108,000, including the interest. We keep just dropping that in. So it does continue to grow. Again, it's within the board's ability to make the decision that the interest is not part of that fund and goes into open own source, but we just keep rolling it in. 
Um, that is something that uh, could be used for needs assessment for any type of research around a building. Now, granted, it was identified originally for Ellie Shore, but it really is the Blue Mountains Public Library. It's not designated for one building over another. Um, so for any of these things, if you choose that you want third party or you want to bring in other staff or resources, that is a place that we can access directly from that. Um, and I'm sure then that, that brings us down to the next one, which is the development charges. We could also access through the development charges. The difference is it's not in our purview. We have to make a report and a deputation to council saying this is what we want to do with it. This is why it fits in. And then council says yay or nay on us being able to access the DC money that is in the bank to do the studies that would be needed for pregnancy. So just because I'm not that familiar with development charges, these come from the developers? Yes. The and fees that are here. We, we get a certain amount because it's in the statutes. So I believe our current um, bylaw is 6% of the DCs are coming into uh, the library pot. Um, I'd have to look to see what the next study is. It's it's still in draft. It hasn't gone out to the public. But this this money would be used for capital, not for operating. Correct. So it is about um, development charges are um, are charged to developers on the new build because as they build new buildings, there is infrastructure that has to yeah. be built. Oh. So the assumption is that we need to build or expand library service. It can't be used to replace library service. So if we have washrooms that are in need of repair, can't be used for that. And I would pick up off of that. You just, a light bulb just went off in my head because I read this and that <clears throat> It can't be used in a joint venture either. It has to be called library. It can't be used for a multi space, or it can't be used for like for a for a you know multi for these other multi multi whatevers. It can't be none of that. Not a single penny of that can be used for anything. Correct. So when we library. when we made the recommendation that a Craigley build, for example, the footprint of Ellie Shore would have the library portion and then would have the equivalent of the gallery could now be, let's say three pickleball courts. The three pickleball courts would have to come from the parks and rec type mm -hmm. um, development charges, not from the library. Yeah. And you would get into, you know, even so much as sort of those shared spaces all have to be identified on uh, prorated to make sure that one DC is not sort of taking well, what, over for the rest. What is a town line account? That means the town holds it uh, versus it being in our savings or our investment. Um, so we don't access that money. We have no contact with that money. The town collects it on our behalf. It goes into their larger development charge fund. They track it. And if we want it, it's owned by council and we go to them and make a request. And this is what you were saying at some point, the, the, the province has their eyes on this and they would take it if we weren't spending? To put their eyes on the top on the big dollar one, on the, the development charges. That's and why wouldn't we spend it? Well, my point <laughs> that's is your point. Right. <laughs> right. Because that's the way the province is moving. If you don't use it, you lose, you lose it. it. So and the province is still part of the problem is that we're all in a very scared situation mm -hmm. because the province is changing how they do development mm -hmm. charges. They're not really giving the information out to people, to towns, municipalities, before the changes are made. And then there's a very quick turnaround to review that. Um, so we know that these are pieces that they're looking at. We know that it's changing and it's hard. And what counselor said is, well, we don't know it'll be next year. But they're correct. We know it'll still be there in some fashion, but until the actual act is updated, yeah. we're still all kind of, Questioning how bad can it get? Whenever the issue comes, yeah. Yeah. how much new new money comes in a year? Approximately three hundred thousand. All right, right. I would give you about three hundred. So okay. the, the next line is another one uh, that we can tap into. Again, it's a town line to count the capital expansion reserve, and that is identified specifically 
for feasibility, space plan, engineering, consultation, or legal pertaining to any expansion. So we had approximately $50,000. We used close to $46,000 and then final bills came out. Um, this has rolled over now since 2018. So this is another one that we can go back to the town and say, if funds are needed for any work this summer or fall, uh, or when we move into the RFP process, that those close to $3,000 uh, can be put in there. A feasibility study, a space plan, a needs assessment, any one of those, they start at 40,000 and they go up into the hundreds. So, I mean, we're not going to get a plan out of that, but it certainly could be used if things are being done in-house to assist with some of our costs for in-house so advertising. Meet, we do our uh, outreach, I forget what we're calling it. The needs assessment and community consultation? Yes. Yeah, so we could access beyond the 1500 that we thought was a budget. That could be added. To make us a request to use that capital expansion reserve? Yes. This is uh, probably too early to ask this question, but do you have any sense of what kind of money you might need? Or maybe we should just say, can you bring that to our next meeting? I can bring that to the next meeting. Um, once we sort of get the game plan, our biggest cost from just the administrative side is going to be advertising. Um, you know, printing those little signs that go on the street corners, doing advertising in our local paper. Um, those are the things that are going to quickly add up, but I can't imagine that we're going to be, you know, more than five thousand dollars to do everything on advertising. What about room rental and some of that? Room rental, we shouldn't have any costs as long as we're working either with our building or in any of the town owned properties. Our MOU says that we can access any of them for no charges. Okay. And do you think you might need to hire some staff to help with it? That's the question. And that's something that we'd like to have a conversation about. Okay. The support is really where, where it's going to come down to. Okay. I'm not proposing that we hire a third party firm. <laughs> that's significantly thinking. more. And I'm more concerned with the timing. So to hire a third party firm mm. is RFP, which takes months. And by the time they get to what they're doing, we would not be making the schedule I would think that if Mary might be available since she's already gone through the strategic consultation process. She's on a mat leave. I know. Yes, but she's, she's not coming back until she is darn good and ready. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do off the book sugar a month or something. Uh, no, we can't. We can't. <laughs> she's on a mat leave. Um, any other questions about we need a gold star, star worker? Yes, yes. My military background must have just crossed over the gold color with the gold star. <laughs> that was a bad mistake there. Sorry about that. Yeah, she didn't know what you were talking it about. It certainly means something to a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. Okay, any other questions on this? On this no. report? Okay. Um, we already received it earlier. Now, there's a motion proposed um, so bring that up. The board authorized to see the executive committee, which we don't actually have. So I actually changed it to the CEO chair and vice chair mm -hmm. to investigate and invest the BNPL funds in high interest savings or other secure instruments such as GICs based on current interest rates. My only concern with that is if we need to act, what kind of money we might need to access. And this might be um, a bit early or do that we can do this in, in the context of we may need to be spending some of this money and not just we get possible ones. Right. Well, my thinking is if we have if we have this resolution passed, we're still making the decision that you can investigate and this body is able to invest in the best interest of the organization. And it's very limited how we can do it. It is going to be GICs. But they're There's, great right now. They're great right now. There's a certain amount that we know we need for 25, like that could be moved over. Um, and we don't have to say that you have 150,000, so 150,000 yeah. goes in one. The trick is you can still have them all for two years, but put them into some smaller increments that if you needed 25,000, 
you cash it out and you only pay fees on that one yeah. while the others continue yeah. to get you your interest. Or you, you put it in a cashable for okay. kind of a lower display or a rate. Or you do a mix, you do some for two years and yeah. some for right. part of it for one. And we had our previous one. One was one year and one was 1800 And then we were going to look at the two years next, just because we weren't sure where things were going at the time. Okay. In that case, our last board mover and seconder for that motion. I love it. That. Thank you. I saw Sean's hand. Any other discussion? We'll just, we're just going to let, let you do that and figure it out. Well, I will, bring, yes, I will bring the information back. I don't think that we'll do it until we know exactly where we are. And obviously, we can't do anything until council gives that surplus from 22 okay. to us. Um, and when I have that information, I will uh, set up a quick <clears throat> meeting with what our current rates okay. are, and then we can sit down. And okay. 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 Any other discussion? All in favor? Thank you. That's carried. Um, anything we want to bring up under a roundtable discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. The whole farm is still on there. Um, I would like to bring up the arts walk. So we have a very big program that we're doing on July 8th. If you have not seen it yet, hopefully you'll be seeing social media. Um, the Arts and Culture Council uh, was interested in bringing the community together, further putting out that Ellie Shore and the gallery at Ellie Shore is a cultural body. Um, and that we have significant art influence in our community, given our just numbers of access. So what we've done is we have an arts walk, which is 2.2 kilometers that is going from the trail on Bruce Street North to uh, Marsh Street, uh, Marsh Street and Clark, it's 2.2 kilometers. We have a number of um, locations along the way. Uh, some are businesses, and they're going to be doing something, be it a musician, a special of the day, have mm -hmm. artists on site, and then along the houses between there and there, we also have a um, significant amount, again, of houses who are hosting artists who will set up like a 10 by 10 tent on the lawn. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is going to be quite a big community event. We are saying it's going to be a beautiful rain-free day. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have a shuttle that will assist a, a 13 passenger van. The town was able to help us uh, acquire that will shuttle people. If let's say you wanna park in one place and walk and then not walk back. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, obviously here will be a hydration and cooling station as well. Uh, we'll be offering um, selling alcohol through our uh, liquor license in the gallery from two until four. The gallery is also um, opening for our major summer exhibit during that time. So that's tied together. That's uh, uh, two indigenous artists this year. Um, if you continue down um, across from the cenotaph, um, the the Legion is has allowed us to set up there. We'll have a um, porta potty, a Johnny there, so you don't have to walk too far between. Mm -hmm. And we'll also have a hydration station. Quench buggy will be there. And then as you continue down, some of the churches are participating. More houses are participating. And then you get into the Marsh Street corridor. They'll be doing their bit. Uh, the Legion will be doing food sale or alcohol sale or drink sale or something to support the Legion as well as a participant. Uh, so it's going to be a good event. So we really hope that you will spread the news, take the opportunity between 10 and 2 to participate in part of it, and uh, again, support the ACC and the work that they're doing on behalf of the board, and also to support some of our local artists. So looking forward to it. A Saturday? It yes. is Saturday the 8th, yes. Mm -hmm. And there is a map mm -hmm. on our website under the gallery. Um, and, oh, we're going the wrong direction. And you can see as we oh, zoom in great. right across 
We've got oh, people. Perfect. So all of these are houses or a business that is doing, most of these are houses. So right along the sidewalk, they'll have an artist that they're hosting. This is us um, that will be setting up. And we're still getting new artists. We're still getting new houses. If you click on them, it will actually tell you who will be there. We may be moving some things around between now and then, um, but you can click on one so you can see. Uh, so this one is featuring our two indigenous artists inside. And uh, we'll probably haven't filled them all in yet. Um, so we have uh, someone who has uh, an actual mobile art unit who will be here. Um, and then if you go into your vendors, restaurants and people like that, we're starting to get information of what they will be doing as well. So Aaron Rung will be participating. Mm -hmm. So we've also included any of the people who will be doing something, whether it's a special with their food, if their information, when you come on down to sort of the corner of the trail, we'll have where our three stops are for the shuttle, which will be the trail, uh, us, and then um, at the Lions Park area. So a big program, lots of time, lots of effort. Uh, we opted not to do Canada Day so that we didn't have a mass gathering event mm -hmm. and instead opted to do something that is much more socially distanced mm -hmm. while at the same point having that same type of impact. It, it reminded me of something that uh, Laurie and I actually talked about briefly because we came in to the uh, Willie's uh, uh, Mm -hmm. exhibit um and obviously we won't have it for them but can we get name badges or i actually have your name badges oh. that will bring them in they came uh -huh. in two weeks ago oh you ordered them i did they came in two weeks ago so <laughs> before we leave today i will grab okay. them for you okay. um, what many people have done and you are welcome either way um if you will change purses regularly on my door which has the metal frame many of our board members or like our arts and culture, they just leave it up there. So when they come in for an event, you know, they can just pop it on. But um, leave it here. You can, but if you I want it, you knowing know. you're gonna to go to council, then certainly feel free to take them with you. Okay. Oh, that's great. Thank you for the time to go over the arts walk. It's a it sounds fabulous. Big amount of our time spent oh, yeah. over the past few weeks. I think Canada Day would have taken from it. Like it yeah. might have been able to shine if it was. We Canada couldn't have Day. done both. No, just the timing. Yes. Yeah. 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 We don't want to so I don't wait after the day. It didn't make sense. We we've opted actually not to do Canada Day Eve because we used to do the parking lot party mm -hmm. um, and we outgrew our space. Mm -hmm. So then we went over and and were the the group who did Canada Day Eve, and everybody always said. How nice that the library is here. <laughs> it's our event. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everyone assumed that the municipality was putting it on because it was at the arena um, and because it was a bigger event. So we've opted that if we're going to do something, we're going to come back and start doing the parking lot party. Parking lot party was so, so it really is being on our site and you know directly connected to what we're doing. But the arena parking lot isn't in operation anyway. Well, yeah, it's completely full. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Summer so camp starts soon. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Um, let's move on to the key messages. Uh, and they came out um, on the agenda. I just um, wonder under community hubs if we should add a sentence in there uh, in the middle. So it would be from the second sentence saying council. Whatever the council motion was, that council mm -hmm. requested that the board bring a needs assessment study in the fall. Forget the actual wording, but that can go in there. I think that makes sense. Um, and I wonder, rather than a final consultation, a further consultation. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah. Um, is there? I know we're doing the opening um, or announcement, I guess, at the um, to be Craigley Station um, next week because it's um, mostly by invitation from people who've been deeply involved mm -hmm. in it over the years. Maybe it doesn't belong in here, but I'm wondering 
That's my question. Should it be Certainly. noted in here? Um, anything else we think needs to be in these key messages this month? When is the grand opening? The date? Next okay. Friday, the 23rd from 1 until 3. So it'd be great if you guys could all be there. That's one thing I didn't want to make sure, just for numbers, that we know who's going to be there. So before we leave today, I can get that. I'll be there. I'm passing my regrets. I'm sorry. Yes, you're. I have my granddaughter. So I, I, don't, I don't think I'll be there. Okay, I'll be there. It's on my calendar. Great. I'm probably going to be hosting because we have lots. Three, four, five birthdays around that weekend. So uh, yeah. I'll, I'll be there. Sure. Yeah, so, um, okay. And I'll check with Joanne. Great. Um, any other changes to the key messages? Okay. So can I have a mover and seconder that we approve the release of the key messages as amended in June of oh, this month? Sean and Marie, thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. That's carried. Okay, so let's get on to the next meeting date. Yeah. Because I know that July 20th date is a problem for people. Um, the focus of this, we've now said, is going to be more of its not so much a regular board meeting as a special one. And um, now, Spree, you kind of suggest we might do this by email, but I'm wondering if we can do a quick scan. Sure. Um, um, you would have to do some preparation for this. Mm -hmm. So, what time frame works for you? You tell me and I'll work to it. Okay. Well, I would say the first week of July. How does that? That's really not great for me because I'm in Montreal going to the International Council of Nurses. Yeah. It's the first time in Canada, and I don't know. Well, anyway, I've never even been. They go usually in Korea or somewhere. Week of July 10th. And I told them, yeah. July, which? Tenth. Week of July 10th. Yeah, that works. Same. Can we say maybe the Thursday? Because that's mm -hmm. our normal day. Yeah, I'm sure. Time. The 13th. the 13th, Thursday. Yeah. How, much, how much time do you think we need to for the discussions? Because they're going to be key supporters, the East End, um, and then some of the stuff about the needs assessment. And the might schedule a three hour meeting. So, have it if it's less, that's yeah. great. Okay. Okay. So, morning or afternoon? It's regular time, so yeah. one o'clock, four to make it assume that's been one would be better. I have company there in the evening, so I didn't hear that. I said one would be better if we're okay. okay, and assume in a three hour meeting that works for people. Okay, so one to four. Yep. Okay, so now July 13th. July 13th. Why not? And then this is a special meeting, so it's probably not going to include things like the policy review. That will be pushed off to Argus. Okay. Right. And, and uh, so you can take off the 20th from your agendas. Thank you. Can you update that for you? Yes. Just getting it booked because it'll walk away between now and getting into the, the office. <laughs> so the August one is scheduled for August 17th. Ah, good point. Can you tell us that one? Hmm? So it'd be normal. Oh, see, we're good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's August 17th at 1 p.m. Okay. And that's a regular board meeting. Great. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me about that one. Uh, so I think now we need to um, move into closed session. And just for the sake of the recording, when we come out of closed session, it will purely be to adjourn the meeting. Okay. So can I have a, uh, 
A motion to move into closed session, please. Julia? Seconder, Chris? Um, all in favor? Thank you. So that's at 345. Yeah.